Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, I want to show you how to set up an in-ear monitoring system. We film videos like this all the time, so if you want to learn more about live sound, lighting, or video, please like and subscribe. Now before I show you how to set up an in-ear monitoring system, I want to talk a little bit about the benefits. There are two main reasons for you to switch to an in-ear monitoring system. One is to reduce the stage volume. When you're in a small club or you're in a church or something like that, you're always fighting your max volume and you want more control over the front of house mix. Usually you keep pushing the front of house mix to overpower what's happening on the stage. If you can silence or nearly silence as much as possible when there's a drum kit on the stage, your stage volume, it gives your front of house engineer way more opportunity to give you a nice clean mix that you're looking for. Second is it opens up a whole new opportunity of things that you can have in your monitors. A big example of this is adding click track. If you want a click track in your monitor, you cannot put it in a floor wedge because your audience will hear it. But if you want a click track in your monitor with it in your monitoring system, then you can do that and nobody's the wiser and it keeps your whole band on time. Now, in terms of what you need to get started, I recommend not even attempting this without a digital mixer. It doesn't have to be a full size like this. You can get a rack mount version and control it with an iPad or there's plenty of different options, but a digital console gives you a couple of things. One, it gives you way more monitor outputs. This little 16 channel mixer has 10 monitor outputs. It has four mono and three stereo. So another thing that you get is stereo monitors. So if you're a drummer that likes click in one ear or you want to change the balance in some way or you want to pan the drums, you can do that with a digital console. The third thing it gives you is it allows you to save your mixes. If you're a touring band and you just want a console like this for your monitor console, then you just need to split your inputs, give one feed of all your inputs to the front of house console and you plug into this with the, your other split and you get your same monitor mix every night. You can save it, you can recall it, you don't have to worry about dialing it up or down and somebody in your band can be in charge of your monitor mixes. Next, you wanna decide if you want wireless or wired in-ear monitors. It's pretty cheap to get a $50 wired in-ear monitor amp uh, that's wired and that's great for drummers or people that don't move around a lot, but typically you'll want something like the Shure PSM system, uh, some sort of $500 or so uh, budget of wireless in-ear system. This is really great for vocalists or guitarists that like to move around a lot on stage. But one word of caution, stick to the name brands. Stick to brands like Shure or Sennheiser. They really know wireless uh, for events the best. Please do not use a brand like Galaxy Audio or Line 6. Uh, they're just not as high quality. You get way more value with one of the established brands and you're gonna be much happier with it. In terms of types of headphones that you can use, it really is up to you. You can go to a company like Westone or Ultimate Ears and you can get custom molded in-ear monitors, or you can use over-the-counter headphones from a company like Shure or Beats or anything else. Some people use Apple headphones. I don't really recommend that. You really want something with great quality. That's the whole point of moving to in-ears is you wanna improve the quality and isolate the sound. Um, but Ultimate Ears and Westone are by far the two most popular right now for custom molded in-ear headphones. Some drummers prefer uh, over-ear headphones. Famously, the guitarist from Linkin Park uh, has always used over-ear in-ear monitors or over-ear monitors, they're not in his ears. Um, but whatever's comfortable for you, there's a lot of different options. You can go over-ear, custom molded, or just headphones, whatever you prefer. Another huge advantage to going with a digital console is the safety perspective. With the digital console, you can put in that hard limiter to make sure that you're not sending too much signal to any one headphone amp. When I'm a sound guy, what I like to do is I like to plug in the headphones myself, set up the limiter, and then unplug my headphones and give the body pack to the artist. So that gives a good level, and then when you hand over the body pack to the artist, if you're a sound person, uh, just make sure that the volume is all the way down on the body pack itself. The last thing you want to be doing is sending a fully loaded uh, body pack to the artist. They plug their headphones in and they just get shocked with the loud noise right away. That's not an ideal situation, uh, so try not to do that. So in terms of how to set up your in-ear monitors, it's really quite simple. Uh, what we've done here on the back of this console, is we've pulled two XLR outputs out of channels nine and 10, just for example, because I wanted a stereo pair. 
And then I took those cables, I converted them to quarter inch using these XLR to TRS adapters, and I plugged them into the back of the Shure PSM system. Now what you want to do with this PSM system is you want to keep it within 10 or 20 feet of the artist. So we always recommend setting these up side stage. I would never put them in a front of house position. Uh, there's just too much unreliability with a system like this. You can see that this system just has a shorter, like quarter wave antenna. It's not going to get that 300 foot distance or 100 foot distance. You're going to be far more reliable uh, keeping in that 20, 30 foot distance. And plus, uh, whoever's doing your monitor should really be side stage anyway. Uh, that way you can have uh, good communication with the artists and they can easily communicate their needs rather than having to talk to the front of house engineer. Um, but that's pretty much it. So you take the XLR out of the board, you put it in here, and then you set your mix. That's a huge benefit of going digital is it's a very similar interface. So this is you mixing front of house. If you're, even if you're mixing side stage, then you just flip over to the monitor and you're actually using faders instead of knobs, which is a lot faster as well. Plus with digital, you can flip over... Um, to the main EQ and you can actually put like EQ on the individual uh, monitor mixes. So if there's an artist that's really picky and they, some frequencies are bugging them in their monitor, that's super easy to do. You can EQ each output individually and then save it for the next show as well. So again, I would plug in my headphones. If I was the mix engineer or monitor engineer, I would get a rough bass going. One thing with in-ear monitors is since you're blocking out everything, you need to make up for that by giving them a good balance. Typically a drummer would just kind of want like lead vocal and bass guitar and maybe a little bit of everything, but you really have to give them a more even mix now and then enhance the bass guitar and instruments that they want to listen to. Um, you definitely want to give them some of everything unless they specifically request not to. And you can use things like panning to clean up the mix uh, for them as well, which is really handy. Each artist will have things that they prefer. Uh, some people will like to hear the you know, audience mic so they can feel connected to the audience because that is a huge drawback to the system as well. Vocalists often complain that it isolates them, it, make, it detaches them from the audience. So you can make up for that by pointing some condenser mics at the audience and feeding that to the in-ear monitors only. You don't even have, to, obviously you don't want to put that coming through the main PA, uh, but you can feed that to the lead singer and connect them to the audience as well. Uh, there's a lot of tricks like that that make it really handy to have in-ear monitors. If you have any questions about this or if you have uh, another video that you want to see on in-ear monitors, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.